introduce you to the limit definition of the derivative and uh, how to use tangent lines um, as well. So this is really your, your first step into calculus uh, and um, finding the slopes of lines, which is one half of what calculus is about. So we're going to start off here by talking about tangent lines. So recall that when you did slopes of lines in, in introductory algebra, you had that the equation of the slope, which you usually refer to as m, was the rise over the run, right? So you would write this as the change in y over the change in x. Uh, and you know this means that you're doing y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So when we have a function that is nonlinear, uh, then this doesn't quite work out the same, right? If I have, let's say, just uh, some function that looks like this, okay? And I want to find the slope at point P. Then what I need to do is say, well, I, I, I don't know what the slope is going to, point P is going to be. Um, but let's, let's look and see if we try to use some approximation of this, right? If I really want to find the slope at point P, I'm interested in finding... Uh, a line that is tangent to the slope, uh, or tangent to point P. And if I find the slope of this line, then I'm good, right? So how do we get that line? Well, let's start off with instead using a secant line, okay? So point P is located at x, and it has the value f of x. And I'm going to take another point, which we'll call x plus h, okay? and this is going to be located up here. And we'll have a value of f of x plus h. Right? And if I were to pass a line through these two points like this, then this is called a secant line. Okay? So this, you can see that what, we're, what we can do is if I look at f of x and kind of draw this line across here, right, and if I go up like this, then what I have is this is my change in y, and this is my change in x, right? But obviously, this does not actually give me, this. the slope of this line, right, does not give me the slope of um, my function f of x at the point p, which is what I'm looking for. But what if x equaled x plus h, right? What if I shrunk down this delta x, right? And you know, here this delta x is essentially the same thing as h. h is just easier to write, so I, I like to use h. Um, we could write this as x plus delta x if we if we wanted to. Um, so. What happens if x equals x plus h? Well, then we end up with a tangent line, right? Because if I take this and I shrink it and I make this get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, then eventually I'm going to end up with a line that is right here like this and is my tangent line instead, okay? So really what we're saying is that the slope of a tangent line is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to c of the slope of the secant, okay? Um, so how do we actually do this? Let's look at an example. Uh, so say this is example one. Um, so we're gonna say that our function is f of x equals x squared. And I want to find the slope of the tangent line at, let's say, x equals 2. x equals 2. So how do I do this? Well, let's try to find <clears throat> the slope of the secant line first. And if we can find an equation for the secant line, then after we get that, we can take the limit as x goes to this point of 2 to find the slope of the tangent. So the slope of the secant line is going to be equal to f of x minus f of 2 divided by x minus 2. Where what I've done, right, what I've done here is I've said, okay, if I draw a little graph of this up in the corner, um, I have my quadratic x squared. 
and I'm interested in finding the slope at x equals 2. So let's say 2 is here. Okay, I want to find this slope. And what I've done is I've said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is our x equals 2, and this is f of 2. And I'm going to take another arbitrary point. And this point I'm going to call x. Okay, And I want to know what happens as x gets really uh, close to 2. As I, That's what's gonna, what I'm going to do when I take the limit. Um, but for now, I'm going to take the slope of the secant line that passes, that was really bad, but passes through these two uh, points on my function. Okay, so the slope is going to be f of x, right, rise over run, f of x minus f of, uh, f of 2, because this is f of x, uh, this point is f of 2, so I take this difference, right, which is my change in y, and then f, uh, x minus 2 is my change in x. So I've really done change in y over change in x, okay? So if I do this, um, I just plug everything in. So I'm going to have x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. And this is the slope of my secant line. And I can simplify this a little bit further, right? I can say that this is going to be equal to x plus 2 uh, times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. Um, and then I can cancel this out. And now I have that the slope of my secant is equal to x plus 2. And then what I want to do is I want to find the slope of the tangent line. So I want to find the slope of the line that is tangent right here to my point. Okay, so to find that, I need to take this point x and bring it closer and closer and closer to 2. So I'm going to take, uh, say that the slope of my tangent line is equal to the limit as x goes to 2 of my secant line. So that's going to be the limit as x goes to 2 of x plus 2. Uh, and this isn't, you know, there's no crazy rational function here or anything. We can just plug it in. And I find that the slope of my tangent line is equal to 4. Okay, So what we've done is we've applied the limit definition um, of the, the, the tangent line um, using the secant to find the slope of the tangent line at the specific point of 2. Right. So what we're really doing, going back to this diagram here, is I said, OK, I want to find, in our example, um, I want to find the slope at this point. This point is x equals 2, and this would be f of 2. Okay. And I said, well, I need to pick an arbitrary point x. And then I'm going to say, let's find the slope of this secant line here. After we have that slope, if I take the limit as this point gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to my other point, right? then what I end up with is I end up with a tangent line, okay? a tangent line like this. And that's how we, how we did this. So you might be able to uh, start thinking here and say, well, couldn't I do this for any function? Right? And couldn't I kind of uh, maybe skip a little bit here where I can come up with a general equation to just find the slope of a function at a given point by combining these two definitions together? And you would uh, be correct. You can do that, in fact. Um, and that is uh, the limit definition of the derivative. Okay. So what we're really going to do here, I want to be uh, really clear about what I'm saying, is um, there is a function. Okay. Uh, so I want to find a function uh, that I'm going to write as f prime of x. Okay, The function f prime of x will generate the slope at a point x for the function f of x. Okay, and we call f of prime of x uh, is the derivative of f of x. Okay, so to be clear, when we had a line, right, when you just had a, a line like this, you could find the slope of the line, and that slope was the same every at every single point on the line. But if you have instead a function that is not a line, something like this, uh, that means that the slope is not constant, right? And if the slope isn't constant, we need a function that will actually generate the slope at any given point. And that function we write as f prime of x, and it's called the derivative of the function f of x. So as we previously mentioned, the slope of the tangent line is given by the limit of the slope of the secant line. If we plug our equation for the slope of the secant line into the limit definition of the slope of the tangent line, then we obtain the limit definition of the derivative. And we're able to write that f prime of x 
is equal to the limit as uh, what I wrote as h or what I wrote as delta x. You can use the notation. Um, for this, just to start off, I'm going to write delta x, right? Well, remember our picture, uh, I'll redraw over here. We had, um, so I just had kind of an arbitrary function like this. Uh, I had point x. And then I had another point up here, right? And I called this this would be x plus delta x, where it's the change in x. And then we have f of x, and we have f of x plus delta x. Okay, And here, um, so this distance is delta x, and this height is delta y. So the limit of, uh, as x goes to 0, right, because I'm going to want to bring delta x really close to x, so that essentially we're looking at you know something very close to the same point of, and I just use my slope formula, rise over run. So the rise is going to be f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And we divide it by uh, the difference in our x coordinates, right? Which is just delta x, x of x plus delta x minus x. This is the limit definition of the derivative. Um, now, because it's kind of a pain to write out delta x and um, it can be weird with squares and stuff. Um, you'll often also see this as f prime of x equals uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, Where we would just write this as x plus h instead. And then here, this would be uh, f of x plus h as well. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to be using this bottom one um, for most of uh, the rest of what we're going to be doing in the following videos, um, but just keep in mind that these two things mean the same thing. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to use this as in an example. So we're going to go back to the function we looked at before, uh, x squared. And I'm going to say, okay, I have f of x equals x squared. What I want to do is I want to find f prime of x. Okay. So what I'm being asked to do is I'm being asked to find the derivative of f of x. And when I'm being asked to find the derivative of f of x, what I'm really being asked to do is find a function that will generate the slope of f of x at any given point x. And the name for that, again, is the derivative. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the limit definition of the derivative. So I'm going to start off, I'm just going to rewrite it up here. So I have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So when you're doing a derivative, we take our function, right? And you just evaluate it at x plus h. Um, and we're going to try to simplify it until we can actually plug in 0 for h and, and you know get an answer. We can't right away, right? Because h is in the denominator, and we can't divide by 0. So I'm going to say this is equal to uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h is going to be x plus h squared. And then I have minus f of x is just x squared. And this is all divided by h. From here, I'm going to say uh, we're going to FOIL this out, right? So I have as h goes to 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared, all divided by h. So you'll notice here x squared and minus x squared cancel out. So I'm going to get the limit as h goes to 0 of um, with my h, x is canceling out. I'm just going to have 2xh plus h squared all divided by h. And now here, you can see that every term on top has an h. So I can cancel out a single h on top with the bottom. So I get uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h. Uh, and then I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to solve this, and we're going to say, OK, let's plug in 0 for h. So I just get 2x. So what this means is if I have you know, just a basic parabola, uh, and you, know, you all know what, what x squared looks like, um, if I have this function and I want to find the slope at any point here, I can do that. I can say, OK, well, if I have uh, the function um, x squared, its derivative, f prime of x, is equal to 2x. So let's say I want to find the slope of f of x. I want to find the slope of x squared at the point x equals 2. So let's say, what is the slope at x equals 2? So to find that, 
we found the derivative already and we just plug it in. And I say, well, the slope at uh, x equals two is gonna be the derivative function evaluated at x, x equals two, which is gonna be two times two, which is four. So once you are able to you get the derivative, you're good. You can find the slope uh, of the original function um, at any point that you want simply by plugging that point into the derivative function. Okay. So overall, remember what we really did here is we started off with a secant and we showed that if you take the limit um, as the two points on the secant line get really, really close together, you're gonna end up with a tangent line. And by taking one definition um, and plugging it into the other, you're able to get the derivative definition uh, or the limit definition of the derivative. And once you have this definition, you can then find this uh, a function, f prime of x, which is going to generate the slope of a function f of x. And that's how you use the limit definition of the derivative to find slopes.